Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself. I'm also the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And I'm here to present some of the most important research related to CLL. And I'm going to present a recent paper and link it to some old papers that have to do with statin use and how it improves outcome in CLL, SLL patients. Let's jump to the bottom line. Several studies have now shown that statin use is associated with improved outcomes in CLL, SLL patients regardless of their CLL therapy. Who performed this research? Where was it published? The latest article on statin use in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, small lymphocytic lymphoma, or CLL, SLL, was uh, published by A.Y. Abdulhawa of the University of Sharjah, it, he, that's in the United Arab Emirates, and a group of international colleagues, including Dr. Jennifer Brown from Harvard, in the medical journal Blood Advances in April of 2025. Let me set the background here for you. As many CLL and SLL patients are older and have other illnesses or comorbidities, statin use is very common. Past studies in cancer, including CLL, have demonstrated an association of its use with lower cancer-related mortality. Perhaps that's due to its properties beyond its lipid-lowering activities, such as its anti-neoplastic, anti-inflammatory, and immune modulary effects. Inflammatory cytokines, these are the enzymes that are released when the body is inflamed, is also reduced. And there's evidence that statins may induce apoptosis, which is the programmed cell death that we see in, when CLL therapies are effective. We know from our experience with BTK inhibitors how effective blocking the B cell receptor or BCR signaling is in controlling CLL and SLL. There's some preclinical studies that suggest statins may similarly disrupt these critical signaling pathways that are upregulated in the CLL cells for their survival and proliferation, and that may lead to the cell's death. How statins control cancer is a fertile and ongoing area of research. This retrospective data mining was done to explore the relationship of statin use and CLL outcomes, including overall survival, progression-free survival, in the era of modern therapies, including ibrutinib, it was also designed to assess if serious adverse events were increased in CLL patients who were on statins. What was the method? Individual patient data was pooled from four randomized completed clinical trials that involved ibrutinib alone or in various combinations in at least one arm of the trial. The trial was exclusively in CLL patients who were 18 years or older. Let's look at the results and first we'll look at the patient population that was studied. There were a total of 1,467 CLL, SLL patients in the four studies. 29% or 424 of those patients were on statins at the baseline. The median follow-up time for the pooled cohort was five years for overall survival and just under two years for progression-free survival. The, patent, the patients who were on statins and this won't surprise you, tended to be older, more female, way more, and have worse performance status and a greater number of comorbidities. All the statins were represented. The most commonly used was atorvastatin at 40%, followed by simvastatin at 35%, but rosuvastatin was at 16%, pravastatin at 6%, lovastatin at 2%, and fluvastatin at 1%. These patients were also on other cardiovascular diseases at baseline, including 28% that were on an ACE or ARB, these are blood pressure medications. Another 22% were on beta blockers, which slow the heart rate and control blood pressure. 17% were on diuretics or water pills for blood pressure. And 13% were on calcium channel blockers, another kind of blood pressure medication. 
Let's look at the outcome. Statin use was significantly associated with improved hazard ratios uh, uh, in, 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 for overall survival and progression-free survival. The hazard ratio uh, were markedly and significantly improved, meaning people on this were much more likely to live longer and not have their disease progressed. And after adjusting for variables such as patients' diagnosis at, at the time of the patient's diagnosis, such as their age, sex, weight, comorbidity, performance status, whether they had bulky nodes greater than five centimeters, time since initial diagnosis, comorbidities, and use of other cardiovascular diseases that we listed before, the statin use remains significantly associated with improved overall survival and progression-free survival. Moreover, baseline statin use, ex those patients exhibited a higher two-year survival probability compared to non-users. Uh, the two-year overall survival probability was 89% for statin users versus 82% for non-users. Uh, the two-year progression-free survival was 54% for statin users compared to only 46% for non-users, suggesting that statins may slow disease in time to first treatment. Importantly, and this is really important, there was no significant variation between those on ibrutinib and those not in terms of progression-free survival and overall survival, suggesting statin use leads to improved survival outcomes across all the different treatments in all the different patient types. Specifically, deaths from disease progression were lower in the statin users. There was also no increased risk of serious or grade three or higher adverse events in the statin group. Let's discuss what this means. This retrospective analysis adds to some prior research demonstrating statin's use at the time of diagnosis was associated with SLL, CLL, pretreatment, slower SLL, CLL uh, disease progression. Prior preclinical work has also demonstrated how it might work synergistically with venetoclax. This particular publication shows statins broadly and meaningfully improve overall survival and progression-free survival without increasing adverse events. This, of course, does not mean that all CLL, SLL patients should rush out to start on a statin, as they can be difficult to tolerate and have adverse events. But it does suggest if a statin is an option because of other indications, there is good reason to consider adding it to your treatment regime, as it may also benefit the CLL. In the article, we provide links to the Blood Advances paper entitled Statin Use and Survival in SLL-CLL Treated with Ibrutinib, Pooled Analysis of Four Randomized Control Studies. But I also link to earlier studies from years ago on influence statin therapy on the clinical course of chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and another on statins enhancing the efficacy of venetoclax in blood cancer. Thanks for your attention.